So we are going to uh, go through project three. The title is Hardware Switch Debouncer. And the real test of this debouncer, whether it works or not, is going to be to trigger a four bit counter. So that's the that's the true uh, test of that debouncer uh, circuit that we are going to build. So there's going to be some design involved in this, um, but we'll start with background. So let's first answer the question, why do we need this? Uh, what is a switch debouncer? Why do we need it? Where are we going to use it? So you have uh, over here a voltage uh, plot from analog discovery. And as you can see, the blue line is bouncy in nature. So if you had a switch being pressed, so think about a switch, uh, and I'm going to come up with a, a sort of a drawing here to indicate a switch being pressed. And the, you know you press this and you release it. So it's a push button with two, term, two, two ends, two terminals that uh, are going to be used to connect in a circuit. So when you press this, there is a contact between the, the two endpoints. And when you release it, the two endpoints are disconnected. So that's a push button. But that, uh, when you press, press it, the contact made and disconnected is not very clean. What tends to happen is, when you press it, you will have a signal like this, where it bounces back and forth, or the bounciness is observed. And then when you release it as well, you will see another bounce there. So you, you want to get rid of that bouncy nature uh, when you press the push button. There will be different different types of switches. Uh, we are going to use a push button uh, to illustrate the switch bounciness, the switch bounce and how do we fix that. So ideally when you fix it, you should get a, um, a pulse, a clean pulse that is indicated by that red dashed line over here. So the input to this debouncer circuit that we are going to design is going to be a glitchy bouncy um, waveform that is going to be generated because of a bad switch, but our output is going to be a, a clean pulse, one single pulse. Uh, and as you know, in the previous uh, lecture, we have talked about how we can use a 555 timer to generate a, a free running oscillation, a square wave uh, in the A stable mode. Clearly, we don't have a free running oscillation here. We just have one clean pulse. So we are going to have to make changes to what is outside that 555 timer. We definitely cannot make changes to what is inside because what is inside is inside an IC and that is fixed. So we are going to have to make some changes to the external circuitry to make sure that we don't go back and forth between two thirds and one third VCC as was done earlier. Uh, but a lot of the principles are going to remain the same because it's still the same IC. Okay, so that's uh, sort of the motivation and what could go wrong if we don't do this? Suppose we were triggering uh, a counter, right? So we are saying that we are going to trigger a four bit counter. If you have a very bouncy switch, a bad switch, then when you trigger a four bit counter, which is sensitive to say a negative edge of the pulse on the clock. And if that clock is operated by a switch like this, it could happen that the counter skips say, states. So instead of going from zero to one to two to three and so on, it might get accidentally skipped a, a few states. So for example, it might go from zero to three and three to five or five to nine. It might jump up, jump all over the place because there are several negative edges that are embedded. That, that's, a, that's an accident though. Uh, that's not intentional because of that bounciness. So that, that, it could, uh, um, that could be a big problem. So we want to remove all of that bounciness. Um, let's see. What are the some typical values? If you think about for how long does that bounciness last for any switch? Uh, the typical values, depending on what switch it is, it may range from few tens of milliseconds uh, to maybe a hundred milliseconds. So a few tens of milliseconds is probably a, a good um, estimate, but you should certainly look at uh, some resources online to get a sense of 
how different switches have different uh, times for typical bounciness being observed. So if it is for 100 milliseconds, we are going to have to make sure that our red pulse over here indicated by the dashed line does not come down before that 100 milliseconds. It stays there for a long enough time so that we ignore the bounce. Okay, so let's, that's the sort of a quick motivation here. Uh, I, as I already mentioned, they could be in software. Um, and if you have taken LiTeX before, uh, you probably have done this switch debouncing uh, using software, but we are going to be doing this in hardware. All right, so the, in a regular semester, you would have been asked to find out your own design uh, to do this hardware switch debouncer, but because we are uh, in an unusual circumstance of me doing the, the circuit building, I am going to use this particular design. And all I did was I went online, um, I uh, put these uh, things in Google. Uh, I said switch debouncer uh, 555. And this was the first image that popped up. So I'm going, I'm going to be using this. And in fact, uh, Professor Connor, uh, Connor's video on Project 3 also uses the same uh, circuit. So there's, there is some consistency in terms of uh, what, what, we are, what our design looks like. Okay, so what is this? Well, there's a 555 timer right here, right in the middle. Um, then we have uh, uh, exactly the same pinout. Pin number one is connected to ground. We'll talk about pin two in just a bit. Pin three is still an output. We ideally want to see a clean output over here. So our output indicates that it goes from low to high, then stays high for a long enough time to ignore the bounce and then comes down. So clean output pulse. That's what is desired on pin three. That's our output pulse. Uh, pin four and eight are both connected to ground, uh, sorry, both connected to high. The high voltage can be anywhere between 5 and 15 volts. In our case, it is going to be fixed at 5 volts because analog discovery goes on up, up until 5 volts. Um, we still have R1 resistor through which the capacitor charges. We do not have R2 here. Well, we don't have two resistors uh, to get two different time constants, one for charging and one for discharging. We only have R1 because it's going to only one time constant is going to matter the time constant which makes uh, sure that it stays high for enough time to ignore the bounce. So you have R1 uh, and we are going to assume that uh, we have a resistor of value 100K available to us. And then we have a, a, a big range of capacitors C1 that we could charge and discharge. And the range goes from 0 0.01 microfarad to 10 microfarad. And depending on how long that pulse is, we are going to have to pick one value of uh, the capacitor. Note that I could have changed R1 and C1 both to get a desired output pulse. Uh, but right now I'm fixing R1 and I'm changing C1. Uh, pin seven, which is the discharge pin, is connected to pin six over here, which is the input to the trigger comparator. Uh, let's see. So those are your pins and uh, most of the things until now may seem very similar, but now we have a bouncy switch. So that particular switch S1 is our bouncy switch. That's the problem that we are trying to fix. Bouncy switch. Um, and one thing to note over here is this uh, functions as a switch debouncer only when we have pin two looking like this. Uh, we need a voltage at pin two uh, that is high. And when you press the switch, it goes low for a short duration of time and then comes back up. So when you press the switch, we want it to go to ground the first time um, and it may bounce here and it, eventually it comes back up. So over here you have VCC, over here you have ground here. Uh, but we want the, the pin 2 to behave uh, in this manner, high to low and then back up to high. And the way we can get this done is by connecting the switch one end to the ground and the other end of pin 2 being pulled up by this R2 to a high voltage. 
So let me quickly erase this so that we can talk about uh, this R2. R2 over here is another 100K resistor and this is actually a pull-up resistor. And it is called a pull-up resistor because it is pulling up the voltage at pin 2 to a high voltage. In our case, we can connect this to plus 5 volts. So, how does it work? Are we getting this desired waveform for pin 2 or not is the question. Um, so, when you press this, right, when you press the switch, press S1, what happens? Well, pin 2 will read ground. And when you release it, pin 2 will read high because it's not connected to ground. Instead, it has been pulled up by that R2 to high voltage. So that's exactly how we are getting this sort of behavior, the, the one that is shown on the right here. That VCC should be the, the release state, the normal state. But when you press it, it should go to zero. And that is done for a reason. We want that pin 2, which is essentially the input to the, the trigger comparator here. And pin 6 is what? Uh, the input to the threshold comparator. So, And as you know, pin 6 is being compared with 2 thirds VCC and pin 2 is being compared with 1 third VCC. So essentially when this guy goes down and goes below 1 third VCC, we are going to have that output pulse go from low to high exactly at that moment when the when the switch is pressed and it goes below 1 third VCC. Now for how long will that stay on? Well it will stay on until um, pin 6. So the voltage of the capacitor, you know when, when you uh, press the switch the capacitor is going to start charging and it charges through R1 and it charges until it reaches two thirds of VCC because exactly at that moment we are going so until it reaches two thirds of the VCC it is going to stay high. It is not going to come back down because when you re you release the switch it is not going to come back down because the capacitor has no way to discharge. Um, it is only going to come down when the voltage across the capacitor has reached two thirds of the VCC and that's when it is going to discharge to ground through pin 7. So that is sort of a quick uh, discussion on how the 555 timer is being used to uh, take a bouncy switch on pin 2 and make it a clean pulse that lasts for a longer time. Um, so that's how we are doing this. Uh, let's see if there are uh, some quick questions at this time uh, we can we can we can address those uh, because I, I think we have uh, put a few things uh, down so I'm going to take a moment for uh, some questions if any because that, that that's essentially the core of the discussion um, So maybe I can, uh, during this time, maybe I can say this. Um, stays high until C1 uh, does not reach two thirds VCC. And this particular event, uh, let me highlight that in pink here and right over here that event of going from low to high happens when pin 2 goes below pin 2 voltage goes below a one third vcc okay so it looks like you guys are okay in terms of the discussion um so what we are going to do is move on talk about the design equations so 
because I need to control for how long uh, the, the pulse needs to stay on, I need a design equation for this. So the design equation is going to be, as you know, it is dependent on uh, the capacitor reaching two thirds of the voltage. Um, and if you calculate that, that time, let me, let me uh, indicate that over here as TD. I'm calling TD as the time duration for the output pulse. So TD is going to be related to uh, R1 and C1 in our circuit and it will have a factor of 1.1 in there. So you can derive this so you can say okay how long does it take for the, the voltage to go from uh, 0 to 2 thirds VCC. And you can calculate that time uh, using the the capacitor charging equation V out equals V in times one minus E to the minus T over tau, where tau in this case is going to be R1C1. Um, you, you can calculate for how long does it take. Note that in the experiment seven, our voltage was going from one third to two third. So it was shorter, it was uh, 0.693. Uh, but now it's going from zero to two thirds of voltage. So that when you solve this out, it will come out to be 1.1 R1C1. Okay, so let's uh, quickly uh, do the design. So that's one main equation that you need to use in our, for all the things related to uh, project three. What is R1? Well, we have fixed that. And sorry, we have fixed that R1 to 100 kilo ohm resistor. And our time duration is right now it is unknown, but typically what would you do if you are looking at a switch, you would actually go and look at the data sheet and you would take a look at its typical bouncy nature for how long does it last and that you would you would fill in over here. But for the purposes of this project, we are going to assume that TD is about a hundred millisecond value. So we need that pulse to stay, stay on for a hundred milliseconds. Uh, at least so let's see TD that is 100 millisecond and what else is there C1 so I need C1 such that my TD is more than 100 millisecond so let's see uh, I have the, the design equation here is TD should be greater than 100 millisecond and 100 millisecond that what is that 1.1 times R1 and C1. So C1 value should be greater than uh, what do I have here? 100 milliseconds divided by 1.1 times R1. So it will come out to be around 1 microfarad. So you can have a value that is greater than 1 microfarad, but since 1 microfarad is a standard capacitor and I have it. I'm going to start using one microfarad. I may need to adjust it a little bit to uh, to do some more interesting things in this design. But I'll I'll start with one microfarad here. So that's going to be that's going to go here. One microfarad. So all the all the things over here have been decided. Uh, they are all um, known now. Uh, the uh, so it looks like we are in good shape, and we are we are uh, we have completed the design equation, uh, and let's let's move on to uh, talking about the simulation. So simulation is uh, this this part is what uh, you guys will be focusing on. So in terms of the task list, uh, you will be uh, you will be doing the simulation. So the goal, bouncy switch should result in a clean output. So bounce should be removed. How do I simulate this in capture piece spice? Well, if you look at any switch model, switch model in uh, capture, it will give you a ideal switch. It will not give you a bouncy switch. So we are going to have to look at some way to replicate this bounciness. And the way we are doing that in project three is by using several voltage sources that are connected back to back and they have different delay times, different pulse widths, different periods, different voltages, high and low voltages. 
So by adjusting all those parameters of any uh, V pulse, V pulse is your uh, pulse uh, voltage. Uh, that's you are going to have to look uh, at that as the source, and you are adjusting all these numbers such that when you measure over here, you are going to have a waveform that looks like this at the bottom. So by doing that, uh, by doing all of this, we are sort of replicating uh, a bouncy, uh, a bouncy switch. Uh, give me a moment here. Uh, I think my screen has stopped sharing. I have been having uh, trouble with this getting uh, not going through uh, very nicely since the morning. Uh, let me see. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment and I'm going to uh, look at Are you guys able to see and hear me okay? If someone can quickly give me uh, an update, we can start. So you can hear me okay. Uh, how about the dark cam view? Seeing is a bit blurry. Hearing is fine, image is kind of blurry. Okay. How about now it becomes a bit better? Okay, so a recommendation uh, for now is to have the project three open uh, so that you can take a look at a high quality image uh, because now this is apparently not a very high quality image. Uh, so I would recommend that you have uh, the words are readable. Okay, um, so let's see. I, I was talking about uh, the the bouncy switch. So we are going to use several different voltage sources to simulate a bouncy switch. Now, a word of caution. Actually, a couple of uh, things that I want to caution you about is this: when students enter all these numbers they miss something or the other um, i want to tell you for sure that if you enter the numbers correctly you will have this sort of a waveform and this has been verified and checked so i would highly recommend that you take a look at those numbers there are some in the order of milliseconds there are some uh, of the, well, all the times are in milliseconds, but all the voltages and rise times are uh, integers. So when you enter this, please double check all the numbers for all the five different sources, because a lot of students get, you know, you, you get one thing wrong and it throws off uh, the, the adjustment because those voltage sources have been selectively set to on and off for certain duration of time so that we achieve this sort of an output and that way we can simulate a bouncy switch uh, another thing that uh, uh, several students get it get it wrong is the polarity of the voltage source um, and you can see i'm going to actually mark the polarity over here let's say i use pink for positive so i've got positive here positive here positive here positive here and positive here and the negative terminal of the, of the voltage source, I'm going to highlight in blue. So make sure that when you connect this, 
you are connecting all the positive terminals in that pink direction and they are going into the debouncer circuit and all the negatives are you know pointing either left or down or right here in this case and they are, they are all facing the ground terminal so by setting up those exactly the same way as is shown and when you measure the voltage at this point you should see a waveform like this a, that is simulating a, a bouncy switch so where is our switch in p spice that is our switch in p spice so that's our bouncy switch in p spice uh, so let's quickly write that down that's bouncy switch and as we noted earlier where is our bouncy switch going into so if i wanted to figure out what what is this where is this connected and where is this connected and where is this connected and where is this connected how would i know well the bouncy switch if i go back one level uh, one slide the bouncy switch as indicated over here is actually going into pin 2 and the other end of the bouncy switch is going to ground so let's do that uh, this has to be this has to be what that has to be connected to pin 2 of uh, 555 and that is of course ground terminal and what is the output of the debouncer circuit so what is in the debouncer circuit there is r1 there there is c1 there uh, there is also another c2 there there is also uh, what else is there there is a pull up resistor there r2 and the big one 555 timer is also in there so all those are part of the debouncer circuit and essentially they are all of this right that's that's exactly what what it is so all of that is going inside that debouncer circuit and that just the the s1 is being sim shown explicitly outside next uh what about the load well we all always have the load right so this should be what pin 3 this should be pin 3 and you can have a 1 kilo ohm resistor connected there and that of course should be ground again so that is going to be your p spice setup to simulate the switch debouncer so in goes pin 2 which is a bouncy switch and if we do this right your output uh, let's say i use blue to draw that is going to be low for a certain amount of time go up high there it is going to stay high for significant amount of time and it is going to come down only when after the 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 bounciness is done so the way i have so ne next question is why did you use 100 milliseconds well I don't know if you can see the x axis over here clearly, but that is 400 millisecond and that is a 500 millisecond. So the bounce I simulated was for 100 millisecond. So my uh, capacitor had to be big enough such that the time duration of the pulse would be more than 100 millisecond. Okay, so that's what you should uh, ideally see in your PSPICE uh, simulation results. Uh, and you know now that we have discussed all the potential uh, errors uh, i hope you you will be able to go through that uh, pretty pretty easily okay so let's uh, move on to the next item uh, i'm going to give you a, a, a sort of a brief summary of the steps that we are going to go over so the first thing that we are going to do is well talk about piece by simulation we just did that next we are going to try to do an experiment in which before we use a real switch we are going to use a fake switch data and i'll show you how we can uh, have a fake switch data uh, in the experiment after the fake switch data we are going to debounce a real switch after we do step three we are going to take that debounced real switch to trigger a four bit counter so all the first four steps, one we have already done. Two, three, four is what we are going to do next. And five is what we are going to do in the, in the next lecture. So Monday we will work on five. 
and then uh, if we can work on other uh, things or, or answer your questions uh, on uh, on Monday. So what is coming up? So this is done. What is coming up is all these. And this is going to be on Monday. Okay. Um, let's see. Mm, I guess this is it for uh, the first one. So I'm going to stop recording here. And.